Hello dear all. So in this presentation we discuss the psychotic miasm as explained by Dr. Kent. So he presents his explanation of psychotic miasm as psychosis or the venereal figward disease is a venereal chronic miasm. So it is a chronic disease. Psychotic miasm is a chronic miasm. Now what are the manifestations of psychotic miasm? So primary manifestation is on externally on the genitals as purulent urethral discharge and condylomatous warts. So primary manifested seen externally by the condylomatous and cauliflower like growths on genitals following impure coition. So it is the sexually transmitted disease where you find that patient comes with the condylomatous warts or urethral discharge which is of purulent type. The condylomatous and cauliflower like external growths on genitals is a primary manifestation. It is developed through an impure coition. These are again the primary manifestation of psychosis. We must remember the external genital warts and purulent urethral discharge are the primary manifestations of psychosis. What are the secondary manifestations? When these excrescences are removed by allopathic physician in the most violent way by cauterizing or burning and cutting by surgery by ligatures, what happens? The figward disease now no longer visible. But had, after having been deprived of this local symptom, this appears in other organs or systems and that is much more worse and these are secondary ailments that is secondary manifestation of psychotic miasm. So psychotic miasm also called as figward disease. When the primary manifestations are removed by allopath who is ignorant of his actions, he is closing the urethral discharge or removing the genital warts by surgery or by cauterization. The discharge is no longer now present and patient complains of some other symptoms of the more deeper system. This is the secondary manifestation of psychotic miasm. Now it is related with the gonorrhea. So acute or chronic gonorrhea. So let's see what Dr. Kent says and he notes down his observations and has given the narration. So it is not generally known that there are two kinds of gonorrhea but one that is essentially chronic having no disposition to recovery but continuing indefinitely and involving the whole constitution in various forms of symptoms. So that is chronic gonorrhea and one that is acute having a tendency to recover after few weeks or months but both are contagious. So let's see what is the relation of gonorrhea and psychotic miasm as discussed by Dr. Henneman. So gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease and patient comes, the male patient comes with the urethral discharge and the genital warts. Now this presentation can be acute or chronic. Acute where the patient recovers within few weeks or months and chronic it continues for a uh, continuous for a long period. Both are contagious, infectious. Removal of the primary manifestations 
leads to the secondary manifestations where symptoms of more deeper system are found and this is the chronic constitutional miasm of dr henneman named as psychotic miasm so it's all the theory of suppression where the primary manifestations are removed by surgery or by cauterization the majority of the cases of gonorrhea are acute the acute may really and truly be called as gonorrhea because about all there is of it this urethral discharge so there is a period of prodrome a period of progress and period of decline in accordance with the acute miasm the suppression cannot bring on the constitutional symptoms like anemia called psychosis but while the constitutional symptoms follow the suppression of acute miasm they cannot follow the suppression of acute miasm but they follow the suppression of chronic miasm so the suppression of the chronic gonorrhea leads to various constitutional symptoms of deeper systems and that is the psychotic miasm acute gonorrhea is treated by acute remedy so in both acute and chronic the prodromal period is about same from 8 to 12 days and there is no essential difference between the discharge of acute and chronic so discharge is purulent urethral discharge and it is same in both the types of infection gonorrhea is mucopurulent discharge any simple remedy confirms to the nature of the discharge itself will soon turn the acute miasm into state of health so acute gonorrhea will readily recover and patient regains the state of health after the prescription of acute remedy but it requires antipsychotic remedy to turn the chronic gonorrhea back into the health so it requires antipsychotic remedies to turn the constitutional psychotic gonorrhea which is nothing but the symptoms which are found on various systems after the removal of the urethral discharge which is called as constitutional chronic gonorrhea so it requires antipsychotic remedies to turn the constitutional gonorrhea back into the state of health so we are clear that acute gonorrhea requires acute remedy and chronic gonorrhea requires deeper antipsychotic remedies all medicines that are capable of producing the image of psychosis are called as antipsychotic remedies those antipsychotic remedies which when given to a psychotic case in its advanced state are able to turn the disease backwards to reproduce the earlier form and bring back the discharge so what is the action of antipsychotic remedies that that whenever they are prescribed they bring back the suppressed urethral discharge and effects a cure so usually the gonorrheal discharge is removed by injections every busy physician sees many cases of gonorrhea in women and children cases of gonorrhea are suppressed by injection in the hands of old school physician and they are often ignorant of their action soon after the discharge has stopped the psychotic patient may be told by his physician that he is all right and fit to marry as he has been cured 
so this man who had gonorrhea the purulent urethral discharge after impure coition now is being treated by the physician and his discharge is stopped and he is advised that he is all right and fit to marry and let's see what happens further but this is not true and he should delay the marriage so cure is possible only by antipsychotic remedy which brings back the discharge so it is not right for him to marry until the discharge has been brought back again so very clear instructions are given by dr kent he is not cured by injections because they only suppress but cured by the indicated antipsychotic remedy only then he may marry a healthy wife and she will continue healthy life and bring forth healthy children husband gives gonorrheal poison to wife if his discharge is suppressed by injections thus the as it is Uh, discussed earlier the man who had urethral discharge was treated by allopathic physician and the discharge was stopped and he was advised to get marry at this stage still he will pass the gonorrheal poison to wife because the discharge is only suppressed by the injection the internal infection still remains and this poison the miasma now gets transferred to the wife you will never know until you get in practice how common it is for a wife to break down in a year or 18 months after marriage now after marriage within an year or so the wife starts getting the symptoms with uterine troubles with ovarian disease with abdominal troubles on going into the history of the husband and that means kin cautions that if you are permitted to do so to discover that in his earlier life he had two to three attacks of gonorrhea that were treated with nitrate of silver or by one of these prescriptions by injections that are known to stop the discharge so in this case when if you see a female patient and who comes with the symptoms of uterus ovaries or abdominal troubles or pelvic inflammatory diseases within year or year and half after marriage you can suspect that this is the gonorrheal poison which is transferred to her by husband and you can elicit the history of the husband if allowed and you can confirm it that he was treated by injection and the urethral discharge was stopped so you will find that the woman the wife of this man suffers from anemia and the man himself also can suffer from the catarrh of nose or other fig warts on the other parts of the body you will observe what followed the contagion or infection in the woman sometimes it is very severe in form and a trouble comes soon after the suppression that there can be no doubt that the trouble she is now suffering from relates to the suppression of that discharge in the husband the urethral discharge is suppressed she often gets anemia pelvic inflammatory diseases affection of ovaries fallopian tubes and the more words rheumatic joint pains so homeopath treats by deep acting remedy man gets nasal catarrh the posterior nares are full with thick copious discharge the physician makes a careful study of the case and he gives a similar long acting deep acting antipsychotic medicine and administers to the patient who begins to improve 
the treatment is given and the course of weeks or months the patient comes into the office and says so the this husband is given the treatment and after a week or month he tells doctor that he if i had exposed myself i should think i had an attack of gonorrhea so what should be the physician's advice that return of old symptoms in that is urethral discharge is brought back it is indication of cure a case that a man with a thick yellow green discharge from the nose after a dose of calcarea which is an antipsychotic deep acting remedy his old discharge is brought back and he says doctor i am not able to account for this for i have been nowhere but with my wife so he can be given the advice that this man can be told that in his earlier life he had a gonorrhea and the nature was psychotic it could not have transferred itself to the man's economy affecting in that way his nose so because of the treatment it got transferred elsewhere in the man's economy elsewhere means it started affecting the man's other systems that is maybe his respiratory system and he developed nasal catarrh that it has disappeared from its new site now it has disappeared from this new site that is the nose under the action of true homeopathic prescription and the original discharge is brought back the trouble that he had in the first place so you should assure the patient that and can explain him that he had regained his health when the urethral discharge has come back and he should not interfere with this urethral discharge by taking any injections or any other treatment so warning is given not to stop the urethral discharge once it returns back in the man and he is assured that he is regaining his health and that was the discussion kent has done about the psychotic myism thank you